Hello everyone, I am Sandeep Kulkarni and welcome to my session where I'm going to talk to you about the particle characteristics and how it influences on the dissolution profiling or dissolution testing of any uh, drug product. I would like to thank Dizo India for giving this opportunity to talk to you on this subject. The people who have joined this conference for the last couple of days might have got a lot of information and knowledge about the dissolution science. Here today, I'm going to talk on this topic. So I'm going to share my screen, presentation screen, and here we go. I hope you are able to see the screen. So as I told you that I'm going to try to establish the correlation between the particle characteristics and the dissolution, how these particle characteristics are affecting our dissolution profiling of drug products. So first, let us understand why we are interested in looking at particle properties. So you all know there are, there are a huge uh, importance of particle properties and there are multiple ways it helps in our, our processes. But I'll try to jot down some of them. First is like better control of product quality. So if you have a control on your basic particle properties, then you have a better control on your product quality. If your particle size, particle shape is as per the intended uh, uh, specifications, then your product quality is also going to be good. Second is improve the product performance. Of course, if you have your particle size, property, particle properties are in, in, in the intended uh, specifications, your product performance is going to be uh, better as and would be as per intended purpose. Troubleshoot manufacturing and supply issues. Now, most of the times uh, we, we don't know what is going wrong with some of our supplies or during production, uh, one batch is differing with the other batch, why, why, uh, why we, we are having these issues. And then when you go back to your basics of particle properties, you try to understand your particle profiling, your particle sizes, shapes, and other characteristics, and it helps you in uh, troubleshooting some of these issues. Better understanding of products, ingredients, and processes would go with the same arguments what I, I told you, uh, uh, just now, optimization of efficiency of manufacturing processes. As I explained, many a times we are not understanding what is going wrong in our manufacturing process. We, we correct our particle profiles, particle sizes, particle shapes, and we can, we can optimize the efficiency of our manufacturing processes. And similarly, yield improvement, stay ahead in competition, and all those things are there where we would like to understand why particle properties are so important. Now, looking at, uh, we'll, we'll try to see how it is affecting the dissolution uh, profiling of our drug particles. So let us understand first the role of particle characterization in pharmaceutical industry. So the statement is self-explanatory. So I'm just going to read it out. So in pharmaceutical industry, the particle size, particle size distribution, and particle shape, which is morphological details, of active pharmaceutical ingredient is known to have strongly affect the stability and aesthetic of formulation. So we are, we are very much concerned about our stability of our product and in that particle size, particle size distribution, shape, all this play a major, major role. So the second statement says the particle, the size and shape of particles used in pharmaceutical drug product not always, but most of the time, impact the dissolution rate of the drug. So now, this is very important. So now we'll slowly try to establish the correlation of particle size and shape with the dissolution. What is the impact of a particle size and shape on dissolution of, of drugs? So let us first quickly look at a uh, few case studies so that we, we understand the, the, the uh, importance of the, these parameters. So here is one uh, comparison of uh, dissolution profiling of different batches of API and SR granules. 
but on the left side in the table, you will see that there are three different uh, patches of API, one with 128 mean diameter, uh, the other one is 135 micron mean diameter, and third one has a mean diameter of 120 micron. And its dissolution profile is here. Now, all these APIs have smaller particle size compared to the SR granules, and they, there is little difference between the particle sizes. So almost all three of them have reached 100% dissolution within no time, and we, we don't see much difference in the, uh, in the dissolution profile. But the interesting part is looking at the dissolution profile of SR granules. Here, uh, there are two batches, one with 675 micron mean diameter, and the other one is 625 micron mean diameter. So the red one profile is showing the 625 micron, smaller particle size, and the black one is showing about the 675 micron mean diameter, that is the bigger size. So here you can clearly see that with 625 mean diameter, uh, micron diameter uh, particles have reached almost 100% dissolution, and in the same time, the other one, that is 675 micron mean diameter, has reached only 80% of dissolution. So what I'm trying to say, uh, establish here, is the impact of particle size on the dissolution profiling. Let's see another case where we'll see how particle shape is affecting. So here is another case where we have uh, done the apparent dissolution profiling of uh, same same substance but with different particle shape. One, the green one is with the needle shaped and the red one is with fine particle. So you can see that fine particle is showing better uh, dissolution percentage. Uh, so again, maybe there could be various reasons, but one of the important reasons here is that the, the surface area of the particle. So sometimes, uh, most of the times, in fact, uh, surface area of the, of the particle plays an important role in dissolution profiling of any drug particle. Uh, before going to this correlation, let us understand the correlation between particle size distribution and pharmaceutical classification system. So I need not tell you, you all know about the class one, class two, class three, class four types of uh, biopharmaceuticals. Uh, class one, high solubility, high permeability. Class two has got low solubility, but high permeability. Class three has got high solubility, but low permeability. While the class four has both solubility and permeability low. And each one of uh, type is we are trying to get towards the class one type. I'm going to talk, focus more on the para class two types of uh, uh, biopharmaceutical, uh, where um, we have a high permeability, but solubility is low. Our first action always is to, to reduce the particle size so that we can increase the uh, dissolution and how uh, it increases, because as we are in decreasing the particle size, the surface area is increasing and the solution is increasing. So let us look at this statement. The biopharmaceutical properties such as particle size distribution, specific surface area, and rate of dissolution can characterize a drug and should be considered early in the development of drug product. It's very important when you are, you are developing a new drug or you are trying to develop your generic product so these are the basic uh, information which you would like to know uh, when you are developing this. The microscopic integrated image analysis techniques helps, which we'll talk in detail. So how all this information can be obtained through a microscopic integrated image analysis technique. So it can char characterize your particle size distribution. It can give you the important information about the particle size, particle shape, and all other data. Right, so 
uh, let us try to establish a main main topic. So we have seen that particle size and shape has some influence on surface area, and surface area has a great influence on dissolution. So how how it is correlated? So we know that dissolution of drug substance depends on surface area. So it is established in this equation where dm by dt, which is basically the change of mass, so change of mass is, is equal, equal to A, that is surface area of interface. So here we, we know that it's directly proportional to the surface area times uh, diffusion coefficient divided by boundary layer thickness, multiplied by difference of concentration of surface, uh, substance on surface and concentration of substance in solvent. So this equation uh, uh, is giving us the correlation between uh, rate of dissolution and the surface area. Now, let us try to look at how surface area is related to particle size and thin particle shape. So here I'm trying to give a very simple illustration which will tell us why, as we reduce the particle size, why the surface area increases. So here is one particle with a constant volume or you can say constant mass. If I break it down into half, two halves, so its mass or volume remains the same, but the surface area increases. Why? Because of the two newly exposed edges which are created. So all other is same, but because of these two newly uh, surfaces, the surface area of uh, this entire mass is increased. So as you keep on uh, reducing the particle size, the surface area increases and th thereby your dissolution is increasing. Now, but to what extent? Now, this is very interesting. So let us try to look at it, to what extent particle size affect the surface area. Now, I found this very interesting graph and wanted to share with you where we are trying to look at it, how the particle uh, size is affecting the surface area. So what we have done is on the x-axis, uh, the diameter in micron is mentioned and y, y axis has got surface area of one kg of particle in meter square. Now, very interesting. And what we have taken is a very perfectly solid sphere particle and how, how it is going. So you can see if your particle size is around thousand microns, so your surface area is pretty less. Right, but as you are decreasing the particle size, and if you come to almost 0.1 or 0.2 microns, what kind of particle surface area you get? Almost equal to your a football field. So that is uh, for the same one kg of material. If you are reducing the particle size, you can increase uh, your surface area. To a, to a very, very large extent, and, and that thereby you, you improve your dissolution. Uh, so the inten intended dissolution rate can be obtained by controlling your particle size. It's one of the factors, of course, there are multiple things, but if you go to very small particles like 0 0.01 micron, uh, you, can, you can have the surface area is as big as Disneyland, area of a Disneyland. The same thing we can look at it uh, slightly differently, but the same information where I have put here the specific surface area on the x axis in meter square per gram and uh, the particle size uh, in microns on, on y axis. And there are two cases where one product having density of one gram per milliliter, the other one has got density of four gram per milliliter. So, how one kg. Of this material, how does it, it shows about the particle size? Again, for for a particle size of around 0.1 micron, you get the you get the 
surface area as good as, as big as a football field. So you can you can understand how big role a particle size is playing on surface area and thereby on, on dissolution profiling. Now, the other part, very interesting thing. So let us look at it, uh, you know, how particle shape is affecting the surface area and thereby dissolution testing or dissolution profiling. So for simplicity, what I have done is I have taken few simple geometrical shapes, sphere, cubes, and cuboids. So these four, uh, so this is a 10 micron diameter sphere. This is a cube, which has got all sides equal, one is to one is to one. This cuboid is like where width and height is same, but the length of uh, this particle is twice the uh, width or height. So two is to one is to one. And this is more like a flake kind of structure where the, uh, the length, width, and height is in the ratio of four is to two is to one. Now, generally when you are doing your uh, dissolution testing, you, are, you would like to know the particle size and would like to correlate with your dissolution profiling. So for this particle size, I'm getting this profile. Now, Generally, whenever you are doing the particle size, you will go to a equipment, laser diffraction equipment, and laser diffraction equipment will give you some particle size like D10, D50, D90. Now, what laser diffraction technique does is that it converts every particle, every size, every particle into equivalent sphere. So whatever is the size of the shape of your particle, it will calculate the volume, and equate that volume to the equivalent sphere and calculate the diameter of that sphere and that becomes your particle size. So for all these cases, four cases, if you go to a laser diffraction uh, method and try to find out the particle size, since I have kept the volume of all these same for 583.81 micron cube, you will get the particle size 10 micron. So for the 10 micron, you will have different particle shapes. And when you compare with your dissolution profile, you will find that they have got different profiles. And many times people wonder, I have the same particle size, but why my particle dissolution is not same? Although there are other factors, but keeping all other factors same, look at the what the role particle shape is playing. So if I keep the particle uh, volume same, I get the spherical equivalent diameter of 10 micron. But let's look at the particle, what is the surface area? So for the perfect sphere with 10 micron diameter, you get surface area of 314.29 micron square. I, with the same particle size or same mass or volume, uh, your shape is cube, your surface area becomes 389.88. And for the next uh, shape, where you have two is to one is to one ratio of uh, sides, you get 409.35. And in this plate like structure, you get 454.86. Now you can see, you will wonder what kind of uh, difference it plays as far as surface area is concerned, because here particle size is seen, 10 micron. So with a cube, you get more, almost 24% more surface area. With this, you get 30% more surface area. And with this, 45% more surface area. So with the same particle size, if you, are, you have a different shape of particles, you will get different dissolution profile. And uh, during the uh, dissolution testing, these becomes very, very important aspects when you, when you are designing a new product, drug product. Another uh, important aspect of particle shape is uh, surface roughness. Uh, now, let me try to quickly uh, explain you. So there are two different, uh, for the same material, two different types of particles, which is uh, one has got sphericity of 0.87, which is slightly rough particle compared to this, where sphericity is 0.97. Uh, 
which is smoother particle, the, the dissolution of profile of uh, rough particle is better than the smooth particle. For the simplicity in my previous slides on comparison, I have considered all particles to be pretty smooth, uh, but in real time, you don't have this situation. So you have roughness, surface roughness. So what happens is with surface roughness, you have got multiple pores and then thereby your surface area increases. And that's why your dissolution is also affected. So the rough, the rough the particle, you've got higher surface area and you have got faster dissolution. So these are multiple things uh, where uh, particle size and particle shape play a role. So normally we look at particle size carefully, but particle shape is also very, very important. So for particle size, we have various techniques which, by which we get various uh, data like D10, D50, D19, all, all this. But when it comes to particle shape, there are multiple ways by which we define a particle shape. Like uh, we call length, which is the maximum axis, which is ferret's maximum diameter, width is ferret's minimum diameter. CED is circular equivalent diameter, which is similar to spherical equivalent diameter. When you're doing that two dimensional analysis, we call it circular equivalent diameter, which is converting this particle into equivalent circle. So area of this particle and same area of a circle, whatever diameter of that circle would be, it becomes a CED. So whenever you are comparing the results of microscopic uh, data and a laser diffraction data, generally we look at this. Along with that circularity, as we saw the uh, surface properties play a major role. So circularity, sphericity, solidity, convexity, aspect ratio also is one of the uh, parameter which shows the elongation of a particle. So it's basically length divided by width, that ratio. So how elongated needle shaped particles or spherical particles will have us aspect, spherical particle will have aspect ratio of one, while a needle will have a very high aspect ratio. Major axis is when you are uh, keeping your particle in a free condition, how how it rests rests on the on the horizontal plane. So how what is the angle of major axis with compared to uh, with respect to the horizontal axis? Is the angle is called major axis. So these are various uh, shape definitions which now we have seen that plays an important role in our dissolution testing or for dissolution profile of drug particle or drug substance. So is there any technique which is available which can provide us the particle size and particle shape very quickly, very accurately? Because when we are developing this drug products, we are doing the testings of um, uh, dissolution, we need this information. So there are various techniques available, but here I'm going to talk about the, this, microscopic, uh, automatic microscopic uh, method where any make uh, model of microscope is attached with a camera and then it is attached with a, a, a very um, algorithm, very strong algorithm, which, which calculates the various properties of particles. Now, this, this uh, uh, arrangement where we have, you, you prepare a sample on, on glass slide keep under the microscope and this camera catches the images, of multiple fields. And if you have XYZ motorized stage, it automatically calculates the entire field with multiple images. And then the strong algorithm calculates the particle properties, how it, how it works. Let us look at it uh, more closely now. So here is uh, how it looks on the left side. This is input image which is uh, the image which you get from the microscope. And then it is processed through the software. And what it does is first of all, it identifies each and every particle. Then it classifies those particles into isolated particles and agglomerations. Now agglomerations can be uh, multiple APIs coming together or API excipient coming together. So 
these are the various ways by which uh, these uh, would be uh, an agglomeration is formed. So since we were not able to differentiate between isolated particle and agglomerations, our main focus used to be in all other techniques used to be the way we prepare a sample. So we will prepare a sample with minimum agglomeration. But with this technique, since we are able to differentiate between isolated particle and an agglomeration, I'm not bothered because I can get the statistics of particle size and shape of agglomeration separately and for isolated particles separately. And within isolated particle, we can also differentiate, classify based on various parameters like size, shape, color, texture, intensity, and many more uh, into uh, API particles, excipient particles, or global particles. If you get all this information when you are doing your dissolution testing, it helps you to correlate your data with actual composition. So you can uh, compare various analysis uh, dissolution profile with the different uh, percentage of APIs in your uh, drug product. Uh, I will not take much time. This is how the, the screen looks. So as you are, the, the system is capturing the images, it's, it's coming, live images coming here with the predefined uh, buckets. Uh, it is putting those particles into API, excipient, generating a lot of data about the minimum size, maximum size of those particles. D10, D50, D90 of individual particles you get, and histogram is generated here. D10, D50, D90 plot is uh, graph is plotted uh, because you want to know whether I have come to a stability level, whether my analysis is correct, uh, is going to change with further image capturing or not. And all this is done automatically. So you have to just prepare a sample, put under the microscope, and start taking the image and it's all does automatically. So although this system will uh, give you a very detailed report on particle size, but most of the details are already there on the screen. So I'm just uh, showing you the details of particle shape or morphological details uh, when you do analysis with a microscopic uh, method. So here, you can you can see that you can see almost every particle how it is how it is looking and there are multiple uh, morphological details like length width circularity solidity convexity cd aspect ratio major axis all those particles which we wanted to see when we are trying to correlate our dissolution profile with particle characteristics now here is a real-time example which we have done using our system. So here was the case where there are two types of uh, drug products. One has go got an API from one source, the other API from other source, but they are both of them have were well showing the uh, particle size through laser diffraction, same, but they were very different uh, dissolution profile. So. The, the, the customer was not able to understand what is the issue in that. So when we run this, these two uh, batches on, uh, on microscopic analysis, you can see that this is the uh, first where the particles are smaller, here more elongated particles in the source two. That is all right, but when you take the uh, particle size in terms of length, because we are not converting everything into the equivalent sphere. Here, the D90, you, you, you find that 6.5 micron, whereas here, the D90 is 13.13 micron. This is the D value of isolated particles and along with agglomeration, so total is 8.27, whereas here, 15. And here, the blue, blue curve is showing the API source one, and it has reached to 4.5% dissolution. And in the same time, the second uh, API uh, has reached only 2% of dissolution. So that is the real-time example where we, we can see that what kind of role a particle size and shape is playing in this, in, in our dissolution profiling. So this is where I would like wanted to uh, tell you about the role of uh, particle characteristics on, on our dissolution testing. 
So there is a couple of slides on what is the new technology which is coming on the microscopic particle size and particle shape analysis. And this is the machine learning and artificial intelligence. Let us look at it. Uh, so although it's a very complex uh, framework, but I, would, uh, I have uh, tried to make it very simple uh, to understand. So the top layer is our acquisition layer or the processing layer, which we call. So the, the sequence is that image acquisition, as you acquire the image, you do the pre-processing of image. In that, you try to identify the particle identification. And then based on your uh, definitions, you classify those particles into API, excipient, or uh, isolated particle and agglomeration. And then based on those classification, you generate the statistical part, which is particle size, D10, D50, D90, and particle shape data, like circularity, solidity, and all those. Now, how machine learning is uh, and artificial comes into the play. Now, there is one engine uh, of machine learning which works on the image quality. So as you are acquiring various images, it qualifies those images, whether these are capable enough to go for processing, because a bad image having too much of agglomeration or uh, no, no particle at all will give a wrong result. So there is a machine learning engine which qualify all those images for before pre-processing. Then another machine learning engine is, works on the classification part, where all those particles which are classified can be put into the API or excipient bucket based on the definition we have provided in the machine learning engine. Now, this machine learning engine keeps on improving on itself with, with, with the help of artificial intelligence. All the statistical analysis data is also going into the artificial intelligence. So all this information uh, goes into AI engine. And AI engine, I've just uh, listed down three points, that is image quality. So the, the more you are using the system, it is becoming better decision making on the image quality. Similarly, the chatbot, chatbot is where the system itself is prompting to the user whether he is doing it correctly or there is some wrong into it. So it, it will not allow the user to go wrong in it. And the statistics, whatever we have analysis we are generating, is going into the database, and your database is becoming richer and thereby. The system is also becoming richer. So some of the things which I have already explained. So what it will do, the, the product is called IPV Morpho. It does the auto scanning of fields. Image is uh, quickly checked through machine learning engine. Classification is done through machine learning engine. All data is going to, to artificial uh, AI engine, which is artificial intelligence, and making it more efficient, fast, accurate reliable so this so within fraction of seconds you start getting all the particles and all the information which related to the that particle that is length weight circularity surface area which is very important for our dissolution profiling is uh, in front of uh, for each and every particle you can see and then you can correlate with your data now i will just run a very quick video to understand how this system works. So here goes the video. There is no denying that accuracy and quality are key challenges pharmaceutical companies face daily. You want to increase productivity but couldn't do due to the complexity of processes while maintaining the accuracy of data. So how can you fasten this process while maintaining the quality of product? Introducing Image Provisions IPVP Class Software. IPVP class is microscopic image analysis system that includes microscope of any make or model, a unique HD camera, and a dedicated software for identification of particles. It is an easy to use software providing key features such as particle size and shape analysis, identification and measurements of particle, morphological details of every particle, identification of agglomeration, auto scanning of slides, particle classification, and 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. As, the IPVP class uses a dedicated particle characterization software with particle size and shape analysis. 
It gives you more accurate analysis, in just seconds, proving, accurate, and time efficient, reflecting in your increased productivity. And, as it uses advanced microscopic particle size and shape analysis technique in place of traditional laser diffraction technique, it is also a cost-effective solution for saving your resources. So, let's see, how it actually works. Step 1. Take sample of any dosage form, like, powder, liquid, cream, injection, etc. Prepare the sample on the glass slide, and place it on the microscope. Step 2. Select appropriate magnification required for analysis. Step 3. Now, IPVP class will automatically take multiple images of different fields of view, through XYZ motorized stage. IPVP class software works through its patented algorithm to generate a histogram, and D10, D50 and D90 graphs are plotted. Each particle gets identified, and further classified as isolated particle and agglomeration. Whereas, agglomeration can be further classified as API, excipient, etc. Statistics are calculated in terms of particle count, minimum, and maximum average size of particle. Separate statistics is generated for each type of particle. The output is a well-designed report that provides representative image, histogram, input parameters, particle statistics, distribution values, and morphological details, which contains image of particles, and other morphological parameters. IPVP class software provides, user identity, electronic signature, detail audit trails, non-editable reports, data encryption, and data retrieval, complying to all clauses of 21 CFR Part 11. Large numbers of customers across the globe have used and endorsed IPVP class, as a complete system for particle size analysis, and particle classification. For more information, visit www.imageprovision.com. Right, so that's where my session ends. And uh, thank you for listening to this, uh, uh, my presentation. And thank you very much.